Uh, this is an update of what's been going on with the Super Duty. Since the last video, I've done, you know, quite a few small things here and there. And I, uh... I did the major repair, which was the kingpins, getting them replaced. They came out pretty easily, the old ones did. Uh, they weren't too badly rusted in there, I didn't need to heat them up or anything. They just kind of came right out, you know, with some hammering. The uh, the kit was about $150 for the, for the pair of pins, the uh, bushings, and the uh, thrust bearings and whatnot. Had them reamed out, and uh, they're a good snug fit. There's no play, like no play in any direction. Like there should be, there should be no play at all. That's good. They're both sides. I just have the spindle covered up with a rag now because it's supposed to pour rain for the next week, and when I'm getting rusty. The other side. The other side came out just as nice. Thrust bearing there. All that it needs now is uh, tie rods. There's the pitman arm right there. Two spindles. It also needs uh, front sway bars. So these right here. There. They're damaged. That one. That one there. When this truck was out on site, it uh, the site was, you know, just completely dirt, you know, and everything. And I guess somebody rode over something a little, uh, a little too high there. And also, it needs just, uh, sway bar bushings in the rear. Where's it? There. Right there. Just the bushings for those. But in the front, it needs the whole bar because, you know, it's all bent. But they're cheap. No big deal there. The uh, the tie rod ends are the money part. That's why uh, that's why it's not done yet. You know, just didn't want to drop all that money at one time. You know. Other than that, it's been good. I fixed the electrical gremlins in it. Put two new tail lights on it. New license plate light. The original tail lights were these plastic, like, throwaway disposable things. When the light bulb burns out, you just take the whole plastic thing out and throw it away. I didn't really like those, so I put these, uh, you know, ones with the metal flange. You know, you can pull the pin out and replace the light bulb. I'm going to do the same for the tail lights, or the, the reverse lights, but, you know, I just figured... Might as well get the thing inspected and on the road before I start doing all stuff like that. I put the DOT lights on it. Turn them on. Turn signal was the other thing that was acting up. Wait for the heater to go off. So I'm not putting too much draw on them batteries. Yeah, I also need a new knob, but that'll come later. screws on them and everything. All my marker lights work now. This one here. The ones up top, they all work. The fronts. The side and the back. 
but that's good. Everything there is done. All the turn signals work now and everything else. I think even the top works. Kinda works. One of the light bulbs is burnt out. needs to be cleaned real well. It's a lot better off than when I got it, so I'll say that. Most of the dirt's out of there. It just needs to be all washed out. Probably just take a hose and just rinse the thing out. Now I'll talk about why these holes are in there. I'm sure you've all seen the holes everywhere all along the box and everything, which is kind of a shame, but they were uh, strobes, which you might have seen in the other video. LED strobe lights. And uh, I didn't like them at all. Plus, they didn't work. So, that was a problem with them. I don't know what I'm going to do about the holes. Probably, you know, I can cover them up nice with a, you know, just put a bolt in there and silicone around the back. But these larger holes, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. You know. Hey, put like a, a KO seal for an electrical box in there or something and silicone around it, I don't know. Well, that's, you know, that's down the line. Once I get it, you know, on the road and everything. But, uh, got my tax return, so that, uh, that'll pay, pay for all the, uh, steering work and the sway bars. So I'll have that done in a couple weeks. And uh, I don't know if I showed you in the last video, but I did get the PTO pump, the original hydraulic PTO pump for it, which ran the bucket. There's one of the brake discs, the hub. So I don't know, but the crane thing might be a little. Might be a little excessive. I don't really need that. Or at least, at least the hydraulic crane. There's no reason to have that on here. Plus, it'll be really expensive. So I'll probably just keep that, just in case I ever do want to. The, uh, the that power supply for those strobes mounted right here. Got the mounting holes for it. They got a plug. And these are the leads that came out. They'll go to the uh, different strobes on the box. Kind of ridiculous, I think. They weren't necessary, but the me you know the mechanic at the shop here for all these trucks just likes to put strobes on everything. You know, except for this bread truck we call it. It's got a couple strobes, but uh, they don't work. <laughs> anyway, I had it. Uh, when it was really cold in the dead of winter, I had both heaters plugged in because you know we we had to move it around. You know when we had to plow the snow and everything. So I uh, with both heaters plugged in, this thing only needs like a five or ten second glow plug run, then it kicks right off. I mean, you can feel when it's freezing cold. You open this hood, you feel the heat from the heaters just come in your face. It feels good actually. That's that. Open that hood again. Now that it's on these blocks, it's really high. I mean, it's up to my, you know, up to my chest right here, the top of the radiator support. Can hardly look in. That's where the PTO mounts. If I didn't show you that last time, and the uh, the belt pulleys right down there on the crankshaft. Yeah, so coming along. Shouldn't be too long now. I also plan on getting rid of that ladder rack thing. It just gets in the way. I must have bumped my head on it three times while I was doing the lights in the back. Well, until next time. Sorry about the wind.